frontline heroes come in all forms. We love what we do, we're passionate about what we do, and we're just here every day for, for everybody. Keeping us healthy, keeping us fed, keeping us safe. I'm not just sitting back watching, I'm in it, and I'm helping people of the community. Tonight, News 4 honors those who are doing their part to battle the coronavirus and its growing impact on our everyday lives. News 4 celebrates frontline heroes. Good evening, I'm Tom Randalls. The coronavirus pandemic disrupted much of what we came to expect from everyday life. But one thing did not change the resiliency and courage of many in our community, what we now refer to as essential workers. Tonight, we want to stop and thank them for all they're doing to keep our communities running in circumstances we've never experienced before. We start with a group who regularly puts themselves at risk just to keep others safe and healthy. The medical teams working in healthcare facilities around Middle Tennessee. Tracy Cornett has just a few of their stories. When many of us were heading home. Today I'm announcing a safer at home order. They headed into work, concerned for themselves, of course. At first, it was kind of concerning just because I was afraid for myself. And then once it, or, or I got it, giving it to my mom or my sisters or my husband. But concerned for the community even more. I was more scared of not being able to provide the best care possible for such a large volume of patients. This all ramped up very quickly. And as the virus spread, we have 4,362 confirmed cases. So did the front lines from coronavirus assessment centers like the one where Corey Berry works. I think at first there was a lot of fear and a lot of um, really stressed patients that we saw. To the ICU where they might meet Shane Ann Pond. We try to make sure that we just take the time to hold the patient's hand and let them know that we are here for them and we're going to do everything that we can to help them recover. Or need breathing assistance from respiratory therapist Jennifer Leslie. A lot of the patients are very scared. And even as they deal with some very serious situations at work, some are also having tough conversations at home. My eight-year-old has asked some very hard questions. He did ask me if I was going to die. And I reassured him that I was being as safe as I could, wearing my PPE like I'm supposed to. I ensured him that this is my calling, that these patients are really sick right now and they can't have their loved ones with them. And that this is where I'm needed the most right now. A need members of a communicable disease response team like Neil Stinson say they've trained for. We've been training since uh, the Ebola outbreak in 2014. Uh, so we trained in what would usually be normal circumstances, but with that attention to detail and uh, attention to safety. They find strength not only from their teams. We're working like a family. We're working with a lot of trust and faith in each other's caring and remarkable skill. But also through the support of all those working in the hospital, like Marie Joseph, who serves employees and visitors at the cafeteria with a smile. I see everybody working together. Got a smile, everything. Great. So that they can then offer that same support to patients. We've got them. We can support them emotionally, and we're going to do our best to get them as well as quick as we possibly can. And as much as the community has shown their support for their hard work, with masks, food, and even a term most of them aren't comfortable with, hero. Hero myself, I don't consider myself a hero. Instead, say it's a calling. It's really cool that to see the support and the recognition that's happening during this pandemic. And even as we thank them, they can't help but offer an important reminder we've all come to hear over and over again. If you wonder if you should wash your hands, the answer is yes. Tracy Cornett, News 4 Nashville. Part of the effort to keep people healthy meant staying home. But we couldn't go without things like food. And that's where we turn next, the employees at grocery stores who help make sure our pantries stayed full. As you can imagine, it's not an easy task. News 4's Cameron Taylor has a closer look. 
James Wolf has only been working at Kroger for a few weeks. He helps with online orders at the East Thompson Lane store in Nashville. Soon after the coronavirus hit, he lost his job at Margaritaville downtown. That didn't stop him from finding work right away. I personally can't be content with just sitting around. So, you know, with looking for a job, but also looking for a way to give back, I decided to come here. He's definitely not sitting around. Working fast to fill dozens of online orders, grabbing each item in under a minute. It's uh, a little bit humbling, you know, to know that I am doing something that's helping other people out. When it's time to pick up the groceries, Wolf takes them out to your car. He loads them up without you having to get out. All right, you have a good day. Wolf is one of around 50 employees managed by Nicole Lundis. She's the assistant manager for the store. Like it feels good to know that you're driving on the road and you're going to a job that people need you there to be able to function their day to day operations during this COVID. Lundis isn't just managing, she's organizing orders too. The days can be long, but Lundis says the people around her keep her going. The customers, the employees that we're getting every day, they're coming and starting a new job, their cheerful attitude, how everybody just wants to be a part of something big, and now we are, and we're helping people out in the process. A process that's giving others some peace of mind during an anxious time. I feel like I'm doing what needs to be done for the country right now, for, for this d Nashville, for this city. Just helping people out is, if that's considered a hero, then yes, I guess so. And I just feel like I'm doing my small part. A small part getting all of us through the pandemic. Cameron Taylor, News 4 Nashville. Well, our next group of frontline heroes is closely connected to that food chain, but in a way you might not have thought of prior to the pandemic. News 4's Ryan Breslin gives us a glimpse into the life of the COVID-19 heroes on the road. Jumping into a semi truck each day, Andrew Clark didn't give the impact of his work a second thought. It pays the bills for the most part. That is until now. Going to the grocery stores and seeing, you know, things not on the shelves, you know, you never realized how much it depended on you to get that product to your next destination. And he's used to being depended on, serving his country in the Marines for four years, doing two tours in Iraq. So we run supplies from from the main base out to our uh, forward operating bases. So in a way, I'm kind of doing the same thing. I'm not carrying a gun around. So that's about the only difference, really. The battle different in nature, but one he's willing to take on, like so many other truckers, with Gog and Cold Hall. The president of the company knows their work has always been essential, just magnified by the crisis. We deal with America's highway heroes every day, and uh, it's a tough job being a truck driver. It's a tough job being in the supply chain. A tough job that only allows Clark to see his wife and kids on the weekends, visits that now start with a shower instead of hugs. And, and it's hard because my kids, they love just running up to me and give me a big old hug and, you know, screaming, Daddy's home, Daddy's home. And that's why he's a frontline hero, even if he doesn't consider himself one. My wife says I, I am you know, when I come home, uh, so that's good enough for me. And he'll continue doing what he needs to for his family and the countless others in the country. In the Marines, you know who your enemy is. You can see them, you, they see you, and you, know, and, and you go fight. With the virus, you, you can't see your enemy. Ryan Breslin, News 4 Nashville. The impact from the coronavirus is just as much an economic crisis as a health crisis, with the restaurant industry one of the hardest hit. And as restaurants rework their business model to stay afloat, their employees find themselves on the front line like they may have never imagined. News 4's Lindsay Branson has that story. Typically, this dining room at Edley's Barbecue in 12 South is packed with customers. But take a look around. It's empty. Chairs are stacked, and there's nothing but a few employees. Lando Quinto is one of those employees. Some may even call him a hero, working the front lines. And through it all, he stays humble. I don't feel like a hero. I just feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. A little viola sauce. Usually back in the kitchen cooking, he's one of a handful of people still working. To put a smile on someone's face, uh, you know, with uh, barbecue and cooking some food, uh, you know, if that's the least I can do, I'll take it. 
To stay safe, Quinto, along with other employees, wear masks at all times. Customers aren't allowed inside, and everything is being wiped down multiple times a day. I'm continuously washing my hands, changing my gloves. Um, I'm very, when I get home, I'm, my shoes stay in the garage. By staying open and offering takeout, owner Will Newman says it's his way of providing some sort of normalcy during a time of so many unknowns. It just for a brief moment, provides some, you know, some distraction away from, you know, the self-contained, self-quarantining at home. Quinto says what makes him happy is cooking, and while he needs his job to pay the bills, of course, it's about so much more. The spirit's still up there, man. This thing can't can't break me. Can't break my family, so we just can't keep trucking, man. Lindsey Bramson, News 4 Nashville. While many of us are doing our best to stay indoors, emergencies still happen. And that's where police officers, firefighters, and EMS workers jump into action, not knowing if those they'll be interacting with have COVID 19. News 4's Rebecca Cardenas has more from a group who always prioritizes our safety over their own. The view from the front lines is familiar to these men. We're the first contact. We're the first line. We can't go home. We have to be out here. We have to continue uh, to take care of people. We have to continue to keep our community safe. It's where they're called, pandemic or not. This is what I chose to do for a living. That's not to say a pandemic doesn't alter the view. But now we really have to pay attention to the details even more than before. And overall, I think it's created a higher stress level. I feel that my anxiety levels do get up and I have to kind of calm myself at times and kind of kind of gather myself. Nashville Fire Captain Richard Tubbs calls it a different department. <sighs> um, a lot's changed. You just start thinking about all the what ifs and you know, you know, what are you exposed to or who, who has it, who doesn't have it. Fewer calls. I think those are people that you know, in my opinion, they just don't want to go. They don't want to get out of their house. They don't want to go to the hospital. 911, what's the exact location of your emergency? Off, Higher risk. Before, I could get my car and go home. When my shift was over, I'd get my car and go home. And now I have to worry about, am I cross-contaminating my car or my house? You know, it's just the, the unknown. No matter the circumstance, these men face the unknown with courage. We're doing, you know, we're out here doing it. We're doing it for, for the community you know, for, for the better good. And we're putting ourselves out there for everybody else. And uh, we, hope, we hope, hope that don't get overlooked, it don't get forgotten. It's a moment uh, in our time where we have to just do things differently to get past this. And humility. I was in Walmart the other day and I, and I thanked those workers. I saw them there putting some stuff on the shelf. I said, hey, thank y'all for being here. I said, because, you know, you didn't have to be. I think we're all essential. Everybody is. It doesn't matter what you do for a living. If you ask them, the view from the front lines is all about perspective. We all have something to do and we are all essential. And the longer this goes on, the more we realize exactly how essential everyone is. Rebecca Cardenas, News 4 Nashville. With schools closed across Middle Tennessee, many children's meals were put in jeopardy. Coming up, one woman's efforts to keep kids in her neighborhood fed, plus efforts by teachers to support their students from afar. And so many of you have sent in photos of your loved ones on the front line. Tonight, we continue to share their photos of across Middle Tennessee. Hello, everyone. Mayor John Cooper here, and I'd like to send my sincerest appreciation and gratitude to all the men and women on Nashville's front lines. Those caring for our sick and critically ill in our community are leading the fight against this pandemic, and I'm grateful to you all. To our first responders in uniform, we thank you for your dedication and steadfast commitment to protecting and keeping our city safe and sound. And to our city's essential employees, we could not get through this without you. Thank you to each and every one of you for persevering and inspiring us all to stay Nashville strong. We will get through this together. And to you, the viewers, we thank you for doing your part by staying at home to keep Nashville and all our residents safe. Hello, I'm Steve Anderson, Chief of Police here in Nashville. I'm grateful for this opportunity to ask you to join me in continuing to thank our city's police officers for their incredible work over the past seven weeks. First, it was the tornado where our officers worked 12-hour shifts without days off to keep neighborhoods and families safe. 
It was a trying time for all of us, especially for those whose homes were damaged or destroyed. We can be proud that our city rallied together, as it always does, to help ease the pain of our neighbors and friends. Now, it's the coronavirus that has presented new and unique challenges for all of us, especially for those on the front lines, police officers, paramedics, firefighters, and our amazing doctors and nurses. In this health crisis, the likes of which we have not seen in our lifetimes, our police officers are here for you. When we come out of this together, and we will, Nashville will be a stronger city, but it will still be that special place we love to call home. On behalf of the men and women of the Nashville Police Department, thank you for your continuing support and encouragement. We will get through this together. Schools across Middle Tennessee have been closed for weeks, creating stress and hardship on families for a variety of reasons. For some, school was the one place some kids could count on a meal. News Force Terry Bolger introduces us to a North Nashville woman who is making sure children aren't going hungry. In North Nashville, on the corner of Joe Johnston and Henry Hale. All right, I see you on Tuesday, okay? Well, we look forward to seeing y'all five. Samaria Leach knows about stereotypes, knows what people think about public housing and government handouts. Hey, what would you like today, a sandwich or a hot dog? Her handouts are different. And remember, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you can come. Hey, Josiah, do you want one or two hot dogs today? Do you want your ketchup today? Let me get your pack on, okay? Schools are closed, lunch programs shut down and low-income families still need to eat. The slapping and wrapping is up to her. Mayo on white bread, fresh hot dogs disappear in tin foil. Every day a child can either get a hot dog, a ham sandwich, turkey sandwich, or bologna sandwich. Hey, boys. Hey. Three days a week here to serve from her back window. Mom, did you want us a, a bag today as well? 50 lunches ready to go, somehow finding a way. First it was just from my own savings and then I started to post on Facebook and Instagram and sharing with family and friends and immediately people started to bring donations, cash out, bring food over here and we have been stocked ever since. The parents are grateful. I am shocked because she also does, I think she helps with the tornado victims as well. Do you want a toy today? I greatly appreciate it. So do the kids. And they be like, thank you, Miss Samaria. Spent them less negative, kid. Thank you. So, I like it. Unfortunately, the thanks come six feet apart. It does make it hard. I'm not able to give my kids a hug or give them a handshake. I have to serve them through my window. Um, I do offer hand sanitizer. Uh, I try to keep my window disaffected, my door and inside the home. We wear gloves and we change them out. With military precision, charts and meals, she's a doer. You don't have to be rich to give. You can just give a smile to someone and it'll change their life. Still, bologna and hot dogs mean money and frustration. It's, it's three dollars and something. We ain't gonna be able to afford it. <sighs> Corona. She says it's her little part. Okay. We know it's hardly little. Bye, y'all. Don't forget Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yes, Terry Bolger. Yes, ma'am. Bye, y'all. <laughs> News 4 Nashville. Great story. Well, closed schools and closed activities also found parents struggling to help their kids staying positive and engaged. And teachers who were used to stepping up in the classroom stepped up in a whole different way. News 4's Carly Gordon has more. It's going to be a beautiful day. On a normal Tuesday, teacher Michelle Dills would be in a classroom surrounded by two-year-olds. I really love the children. But today is not a normal Tuesday. Yes, I love the kids so much. Like so many others, Dill's school is now closed. Families are quarantining at home. And since kids can't get to their classrooms. Ready? One, two. Dill and other teachers are bringing the classrooms to them. Munch, munch, munch. Sending daily videos of story time to keep their minds engaged. On your tiptoes. And dances. No one knows. To keep their bodies active. So that they're not sitting at home wondering 
Hey, what happened to my teacher that I see every day during the week? We've also seen daily lessons from Madison Creek Elementary School teacher, Mr. Clapp. Today's lesson is all about toilet paper. And while these teachers may not be on the front lines fighting coronavirus and calculating how many sheets there are in a row, any parent with a school-aged child at home will tell you they're helping in the fight to keep their kids mentally and emotionally supported in this unusual time. I just wanted parents that were struggling to balance work and becoming a teacher. The lessons are found in the objects and the everyday things that we're already doing. Those lessons can be fun and engaging and appropriate for multiple different age group children. They're all trying to get the bear off of her knee. Carly Gordon, the end. News 4 Nashville. For many people on the front lines, there's a spouse or family member helping to hold things down at home. I think we're trying to do the best that we can, and yeah. we're trying to do our jobs. Still ahead, what happens when both parents are considered essential workers? A member of our News 4 family opens up about life on the front lines. But first, a few more of your photos celebrating frontline heroes from across the year. Hello, I'm Jane Englebright, Chief Nurse Executive at HCA Healthcare. From all of us at HCA Healthcare, we want to thank the caregivers and all of the essential workers who are caring for our Nashville community and really communities around the world during this unprecedented pandemic. When the world is told to stay home, you show up ready to do whatever it takes. Your hard work, dedication, and commitment to caring for others truly makes a difference, and it helps make everyone around you stronger and safer. You have raised the bar on what it means to care for others. From the bottom of our hearts, we are grateful. Wherever you work, on the front line or at the bedside, you are our heroes today and every day. Hello, I'm Will Swan, Director Chief of the Nashville Fire Department and Office of Emergency Management. And I want to thank my whole department, all the men and women, for all the hard work they've been doing in these last few months. Thank you. Hey guys, I uh, just want to say a quick thank you to all the doctors, nurses, patient care supporters, lab techs, environmental services, therapists, nutrition, supply chain professionals, pharmacy workers, researchers, and telehealth for keeping us safe, for keeping us healthy. Um, we're entirely grateful for all the hard work you guys put in, um, sending lots of encouragement, sending lots of strength. You guys got this. For every health care employee on the front lines, there are spouses, children, and families supporting them at home. No one knows that better than our own Lindsey Bramson. Lauren Lowry got a unique look at what it's like to support a loved one on the front line. And daycare directors tell me they're just ready to see their kids again. You know Lindsey Bramson as our award-winning consumer investigator. But at home? Good job. She's just mom. Whoa. These days, she trades off caretaking with her husband, an emergency room doctor. How, how many whales? One whale. One whale, that's right. The, who is the picture of? And when he's off, she's on. So I want to make sure I understand this correctly, too. I think we're trying to do the best that we can, and yeah. we're trying to do our jobs the best that we can and help people, which we both do in different ways with both of our jobs. Because between 2.30 and 3.45. Stephen works all hours of the day and night at Southern Hills Medical Center in South Nashville, seeing at least one coronavirus patient every day. Donning a protective mask and goggles, he and his co-workers are on the front lines fighting the disease. I've been doing this job helping people and caring for sick people for a long time. But the sacrifice is recognized across the community, especially at home. Lindsay posted recently on Facebook, his job has never been more important, and I've never been more proud of him than I am right now. It just means a lot that yeah. people are so thankful because you're putting your life on the line to, to help people, and you don't know what could happen if you get it. It's scary. I mean, you're going to work, you know? Like, you come home, and every day I just you know, pray that you haven't been around somebody um, because it's scary to see what it's doing to so many people. Despite the concern, these parents are doing everything to keep the cogs at home and at work spinning. The craziness, it feels normal. 
and they're building a stronger community together. Ready? One, two, three. Knock it down. <laughs> Lauren Lowry, News 4 Nashville. Coming up, hear from more frontline heroes talking about what keeps them motivated. And we love celebrating your loved ones on the front line by sharing their photos right here on News 4. You can see even more right now on News4.com and our News 4 app. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Jeff Balzer. I want to add my voice to the many others expressing gratitude to our heroes on the front lines. Your hard work and courage are making a difference for all of us, especially those of us in healthcare. Whether it's the cashier at the grocery store, or the EMTs, firefighters, and police officers protecting us, or the countless others supporting us, you are risking your lives so we can care for those who need us. A special word of thanks to our fellow healthcare workers, my colleagues at Vanderbilt and all the hospitals at Middle Tennessee, including our researchers working day and night to find treatments. You are all heroes. We are humbled by your leadership and sacrifice. And thank you to this wonderful community. In this terrible storm, we are lifted by your care and your strength. Your warm wishes have been the wind in our sails, and we thank you. Hey guys, this is Mike Brable from the Tennessee Titans. I want to thank um, all those amazing doctors and nurses and healthcare professionals. Your dedication and your service and your determination to help our community uh, has not gone unnoticed. I want to thank you for putting our community's well-being uh, before your own uh, and, and hopefully that we can emulate what you guys have done uh, during this trying time. I want to thank you again. Hello, Adam News, General Manager for your Nashville Sounds. And on behalf of our entire organization, we want to thank everyone on the front lines battling the COVID-19 pandemic. From doctors to nurses, police officers, we thank you for all the effort to bring back some normalcy to Middle Tennessee. We look forward to seeing everybody at First Horizon Park as soon as it's safe to do so. Thanks again. Go Sounds. There is much work left to be done to prevent further spread of the coronavirus. And we thank all of you who will continue to fight on the front lines. That's all the time we have for this News 4 special celebration of Frontline Heroes. Our reopening Nashville Town Hall is coming up next. We leave you tonight with more images of those hard at work. People need support and connection to love and hope more than ever before. something I want to do with my life to make a little difference in somebody's life. I would not want to go through this with anybody else in the group of physicians, nurses, respiratory therapists. We don't do this for, for recognition because that's not something that, that comes that often. We are honored and humbled uh, by our community's support for the healthcare workers. You're literally saving the world right now and we're all grateful. The courage and personal sacrifices of Nashville's frontline healthcare workers will not be forgotten. Hi, this is Ian. Uh... Hey, this is Mike Jacobs. Hello, here's Hani Mukta from Nashville SC. We want to thank all of our doctors and healthcare providers for everything they do to keep us healthy and safe. A big thank you from me and my family to all the doctors and healthcare workers out there. And everyone working hard for all of us right now. We really appreciate it. Big thanks to all of the doctors and healthcare workers who are putting their life at risk and working during this difficult time. I want to first thank the amazing caregivers at Ascension St. Thomas. I've never been more proud to witness your courageous response in tackling this pandemic. It's been inspiring to see the extraordinary ways you've answered the call to care and live out our mission. Thank you. To everyone on the front line stepping up to keep our community safe, you all are exhibiting tremendous compassion, dedication, and kindness that is unifying our communities. Your sacrifices and heroic efforts have not gone unnoticed. Thank you. And lastly, 
to all of you doing your part to remain socially distant so that our health systems and community leaders can adequately plan and care for patients during this time, know that we could not do this without your help in flattening the curve. Thank you.